you know, we're common with day in practice and just say, hey, we're loading up and you're still going. Like, what's worse going to happen? You know, at that point, you can play all the games you want to with those interior six guys, but just make sure your exterior five guys stay the same. You know? Um, I said the defense with you is pretty simple. Do you have any questions on that before I move on? Okay, like the offense, you have a question here? No, no, I'll say thumbs up. Okay, good. Deal. I got it. <laughs> All right. And that's easy. That's easy stuff there. That's, that's, I mean, that's um, The defense, or the offense, I'm going to start with the third and fourth grade. And basically, well, I've got two things. And the third and fourth grade is going to run the first one. Then the fifth and sixth grade, once you get good at the first one, add the second one. And that's it. You know, don't, don't get wild with it. Just, just get good at these, doing these handful of things. And what I'm going to start with, uh, it's going to be really similar to what I did last time. I'm, I'm tweaking a little bit what we're doing in high school um, because, you know, as you go, you just always evolve a little bit. Um, last year, toward the end of the year, we started going balance, like the whole game. And I've, been, I've, I've just been about become obsessed with how many, how many bodies can I throw at the point of attack on every play. Um, so, I, would, I mean, I'm going to go on balance. The junior high is going to be on balance, just go on balance, you know. Um, so that, that's what the, a lot of this is going to be based on. So, terminology-wise, obviously center. We'll call him a quick guard. We'll call him a strong guard. We'll call him an inside tackle. We'll call him a strong tackle. I'll have a tight end. We'll call him a wide receiver. And I've never done this, and I've always refused to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway this year because I'm an idiot. I'm going to number my running backs, and I never like doing it, but I'm going to. And, and I'll show you why in a second. My quarterback's are number one. The wing back on this side is number two. The other one is a three. And my fullback's a four. And spacing-wise in this alignment, um, last year I went foot to foot for the past couple of years, and... Actually, I read this article and heard this guy speak online about the physics of spacing if you're a lineman. And he recommends two feet. He goes into why you should go two feet and, and all that stuff. But I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to go finger to fingertip to get our spacing. That's what we did. Lineman. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people do that. And I'm just going to see if I like it. And that's, that's how we're going to start with the high school year, going fingertip to fingertip. So, you know, your, your, your tight ends, your guards, your, everybody, just finger to fingertip and try to get the space out like that. And if I don't like it in high school, I'll probably change it back. But that's what I'm going to start with. Um, what was number two and number three? They're just, they're just wing backs. I, I just, when, I, when I call them, I'm going to call them a two back and a three back. Right. But they're just wing backs. Right. You know what I mean? As far as how they're aligned, I have one yard outside and one yard deep, and I angle them in. So if, I, if this is the tight end here, my running back is back here at an angle. I like it. That way he can take off. And go, and he can go either way. He can take off this way. You can you can do a lot of stuff with him, and, and he can move with both feet. If you square him up, I feel like it takes longer to turn around. So that's why I turn him at an angle. So he's one, he's one yard back, and he's one yard deep. Um, I would not have him any deeper, especially with the little kids. Then you have to get him up there close so it gets her quick. You know, I'm going to tell my guy to go four yards deep. Um, and uh, let me think what else. Oh yeah. Offensive line. I've got. The, I've always was told that this one coach I actually met him in Pittsburgh last year at a clinic. His name's Tim Murphy. I always liked his stuff. He's super jacked. I don't need to lift weights all the time, I guess. Um, but his coaching stuff I like. And I always sort of an offensive line video was great, so I bought it. And he has his guys go down in the four point stance. And I've never seen anyone do that. And I thought well, I'm going to do that because it looks cool for one. And secondly, it, the offensive line have to be low. Because I've always had a hard time with little kids getting down in stands because they always look like they're frogs and it's just very awkward for them. So I'm going to have them <laughs> get down in a four point stance. Just like this. So my back is flat, okay? And you really want your, you know, I'm probably up with my toes too much there. It's probably more like this, okay, with my ribs over my thighs. And, and, and start out like that. And again, it just keeps them low, keep, you know, keep your head up instead of, I, I see this a lot. Weird stuff with little kids, and it's just a very awkward thing. So if you're like this, they're uncomfortable, the first thing they do is stand straight up. So I'm hoping this will keep them down lower. And again, I'm going to have a bunch of kids that never played football before in lives in high school. Uh, I'll probably have three linemen that never played before. So hopefully this will help them stay low. So I'm going to do it this year. 
And you know, people at school. So we're going to do it. No one else. Um, we're going to have a handful of just primary plays. And I'm going to start with primary and we'll get the secondary ones. And I'm going to call them by numbers. And so, like this formation here, in third, third and fourth grade, just going to run under. We can call it under right or under left. This, we're set the strong sides to the right, so this would be under right. If it was under left, it would be just flipped. And, I mean, and when we say flipped, everyone flips. So if we went under left, you know, your strong guard is now over here. Your strong tackle, I'm sorry, your inside tackle, <coughs> everyone, okay, even your running backs flip. So, okay, so when we run these plays, I'm going to draw them to the right, but, you know, this is under right, the other way is just under left. Everyone flips. <coughs> and then this goes along with the uh, things I said I would never do because I didn't like it. Used to last year when I called a play, I just called a sweep right, sweep left. That's how I did it. Um, but when I call a sweep, I'm going to call it an eight. An eight is ran out here. And this is a traditional old belly play. If you guys are familiar with that, balls ran right here. We're going to run a power, but if I was you guys, I would not do power until you get everything else down. But I would do this one after the fact. A wedge. Zero. Seven. And a nine. Actually, yeah, yeah, we'll nine. I'm going to call it this. I'll let you guys aren't really good at game. We'll call it that. And so how we want to call the play is, I would say under right 28. Under right of the formation, 28, two's getting it, and it's a sweep to so it's eight. That's all it is. So under right, 28. Um, and I'll tell you, I'm going to talk about how I'm going to block it. But the reason I, I, I'm going to switch to this instead of what I did last year, if I would have said, you know, swing right, sweep right, the reason I'm changing this is I want to go to the middle, and I'll probably just yell something out that the numbers are correlated to, so that way we don't have to send someone back and forth all the time. Um, so that, that's why I'm going to change it. Now again, if you guys, oh, you don't have to, I'm not telling you guys what to hold. You know, I'm just saying, that way they learn the terminology, um, and I, can, I think this will help us with that. So, if you only run one, two, three, four, these five plays, and let's say we'll do a, I'm, I'm going to write these down so I make sure I talk about all of them, a play action pass out of this. And then we'll go just like one drop back, and we'll talk about that. That's really all you got to run. And I know it doesn't look like a lot, but let's say you just rep the piss out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plays. If you get really good at that one, I mean, you've got all year to be good at that. That's all you got to do. And I know, like talking about what I did before, when my son was in fifth grade, they were all fifth graders. <clears throat> and we just did this. Actually, we didn't run this. <coughs> and we led the league in scoring and we went undefeated until the final game we played Valley sixth graders who were just bigger than us and they beat us. You know, so you can run these these plays and you'll be just fine if that's all you run. Um, how I'm gonna block this stuff. And you know whenever we do this stuff in the summertime we have a little camp. You guys are always welcome to come if you want to watch. If you have any questions, I mean, I know I'm videoing this, so you guys have something to reference, but, you know, if you're starting to teach it, you want me to come down? I love the use stuff. I'll come down. You know, I like it. Um, I, and I'm trying to go over this so you guys have an idea, and I wanted to get a video put together. Um, so anyway, how, how I'm going to block a sweet play? I'm going to erase this now. So let's say I went 28. He's going to take off motion, but he didn't have to take off motion real far because he wants to catch, you know, he's going to reverse turn and hand off to him. So it's not it's down, set. He's taking off, and he's going. And he's getting the ball, and he's shitting and getting right through here. And that's where his, it's not real, real wide. It's, the ball's not out here. It's more inside. How we want to block this is you want him. He's going to have probably defensive back over here on him. I don't, don't, don't have him block him. That'll be what he wants to do. Have him go seal off this linebacker standing right here. 
and he got me a good crack black key. I did not see it coming. Okay, him and him, their job is to seal off the edge defender there, that defensive end outside linebacker guy. Have him double team him. Even if that guy's not real good, he thinks he get him by himself. Have him do it anyway. So no matter what, he's getting him. Okay. Now, if this were a normal sweep, this is probably the one series where I don't have him come out and get the fullback. And the reason is, once the quarterback reverse turns, hands off, he's going to fake the fullback running through here. Okay, fullback doesn't have to block anyone. He just has to fake like he's got to go. Okay, and once he once he hands off or once he hands off the two, fakes the four, he can just boot out of here like he's got the ball. Now, this is the hard thing I've always thought with little kids is to get them to pull. You want this guy to pull through here in the alley. You want him to pull up here and look for this other linebacker that he did not get because he's gonna get the first one. We need someone to get the second one. Kind of cut him off. Less important of a block than this one, but still we want someone to cut him off. Okay? If you cannot get your guards to pull, you won't be able to at first. I mean, I think you've got to know that as a coach. You won't be able to at first. Just keep working on it until they can. And maybe you just get one of them to pull. Okay. That means closer to work, you know. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just get close to perfect. Okay? Um, and, and what his job is, these two guys have a have a specific job in this. Number four needs to come back and tell you no one touched me. If no one touched you, we'll run something else here in a second. We'll talk about it. Okay? His job is when he boots out, if no one touched you, if no one's paying attention to coach, no one's paying attention to me. Well then you need to know that so you can call something else. Okay? So these two guys have a very important job and, and don't let them forget that. Because if they want the ball, they need to tell you, coach, no one touched me. No one's looking at me. So that would be a good, should be a good incentive for them to understand how to do that, okay? But again, this is the one guy that's we're kind of leaving on block because a normal sweep play, he was coming after him and he's carrying out a fake. I'm just guessing, hopefully number two is one of your better backs. If we're just counting on their little turds out here to tackle him in open space, okay, he did it once. Is he going to do it again? Is he going to do it again? You know, this is the play around the pace side of the play stop. Yeah, that's open field, so it's Kind of he's going to get five yards. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be hard for that, a hard tackle anyway. So you're taking the chance to get five yards, or you get more than that. Yeah. So that's I'm willing to risk that. Okay. Now to go off of this, and you know we ran sweep, we ran a we ran a twenty eight. I'll come back to that in a minute. That's so why I want to write that down so I don't forget. Okay. I'm going to touch on all these plays real quick, and I'll talk about something else. Who wants to talk? She don't know. She don't know nothing. All right. <laughs> 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 she don't even see that. There's only a little glitch in the video. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we're gonna go to seven here, and this is always my favorite play. It's not something you have to set it up by running the eight. Okay. We're going to block it. He's going to go safety. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. He's so going to motion. <coughs> Ball's high. Hand off. You are, you are handing off to number two. You're handing off to two. Ball snapped. He's taking a jab step and coming back. He's taking a jab step and coming back. Okay? And the reason we're doing it is. It's a double handoff. He's going to hand off to him. He's faking, carrying out his fake as if we're running 28, as we're running a sweep. But three is going to get the ball right through here and hopefully get some good yardage here. These guys, excuse me, these guys are going to cross block. So he's going to block the first guy inside of him. <coughs> he's going to kick out the edge defender. Okay, your fullback that jab stepped and came back, he's going to clean out the hole. Okay, your number, who's that, your strong guard? Your strong guard, again, if you can get in the pool, this is what we want. If you can't, you can't. He's going to also lead to the hole. Again, his main body is the more attack as we can. <coughs> Hit the center's job, he'll have to block back on the guys over top of him. Okay, your, your uh, quarterback, once he hands off, just do what he did on sweep. Take off. Because if they are paying attention to him, and let's say his defensive end goes with him, he's leaving a huge hole for the counter to be ran because he's following him. <coughs> and 
I know I got a lot of squiggles there, but you want this to look like eight as much as possible. And the only true difference is, you know, especially initially, he's jab stepping and coming back, he's jab stepping and getting the ball, he's getting the ball first, double hand off. You have to wrap this a lot to make it look good, to make it look clean. Because it's, it is, it's just a hard thing to do anyway. Because you're asking for a handoff and another handoff real quick. I think what will help with this is the fact that he's three linemen wide, so he should have time to uh, take the handoff and go. But what, when you're repping this, what you really want is, you know, typically we, we try to get the kids <coughs> to do this whole, you know, get the ball in your belly, make a pocket. When you're doing this, when number two knows he's handed off, just, just have him make a little cradle with his hand. Stick in his hand so he can get it. And everyone sees him with the ball. And he, you know what I mean? You want them to know he's got the ball. That's what you want. So don't have him do this stuff here because by the time he gets it, uncorks it to hand it to someone else, it's probably too late. So just have him make a little credit with his hands. And like I was calling this, it really 37 is what we became all this. I talked before, you know, number four, he needs to tell you if no one's paying attention. And a good time to call belly. Is when no one's paying attention to him, or if this defensive end starts to make the tackle. If he starts getting out here and these guys aren't doing their job. If he starts making the tackle, run belly. Because he's already seen this guy come in motion, run right at him. If he makes a play, run it back at him. Come in motion, reverse turn. He's here. That wide receiver or the, the defensive end is going to try to go with him. Hand off to him. Run right through here. <clears throat> yeah, a, little, a little tight. He's going to be right through here. Right through here. Okay. And again, good time to call that. If he comes back and says, Coach, you're not paying attention. Or if this guy makes a tackle, run it right at him. Because he's going to widen out. And the way we block this, it's a down block, a down block, and he's kicking him out. Okay? So whoever's the first guy inside of him, if they have a lineman right here, kick him. Or come down on him. If they have a lineman here, come down on him. If it's a linebacker, whoever it is, the first guy inside of you is going to go after. Okay? Now your number three doesn't have any on the block. Okay? So what you want him to do is he has to get out outside of this guy and not get tangled up with him. So that's why it's hard. Someone needs to come through here and help make a wall with that linebacker that's standing right there. If there's an outside linebacker here, you got to tell him, don't touch that guy. Hopefully he goes with the flow of this guy and widens out with the guy that we're faking the sweep. He cannot touch him. He's got to seal off because you basically want a wall here and force him to cut it right through there. Okay? Safety's going, I'm sorry, wide receiver's going safety. And again, he's booting out. <clears throat> That's pretty much it. When we run it like this, really four is the only guy that you can give it to. 46. So under right, under left, 46. Uh, we got wedge. I love the wedge play. The, uh, and what you might have to do with this one, you know, I talked about being foot to foot. I'm sorry. Finger to fingertip, you might have to tell them to cut their splits down a little bit. It's a little bit closer. Um, but the wedge play is just a good, hard nose, <clears throat> short yardage play. And how we teach it. What is this? Oh, yeah, I thought I should have done there. Okay. How we teach it is he has to put his inside shoulder pad on this guy's number. And it's, it's shoulder to shoulder. I try to get my guys to put your, your inside shoulder on his outside shoulder and just push. Whoop. So everyone is just, just taking a step in and just trying to get a big push. And actually, I, I debated on making Right now, this is the apex of the wedge, the center. I debate on making it right here. But for now, I'm going to teach it right here. Just do the best you can and get a big push. Number two and three, I tell them, you throw your 96 pounds right in here and just push. <laughs> you cannot, well, 
Some referees will tell you you cannot push the ball carry in the back to aid the runner. Some will tell you that. So I tell them to push the guards. Some will tell you it's fine. So, again, I just tell them to push the guards. In the youth, the in youth, they had a problem with it. Junior high, they did Yeah. I, I think it's okay now. I, I, do, I do think it's legal, but just because it is legal doesn't mean the fish knows it's legal. Right. Um, but that's how I've, I've always told them to push the guards. And you have two ways you can run this. You can run it with a 10. The quarterback is getting it going as a wedge play. It's a quarterback sneak at that point. You can do it at 40. And it's just a, you know, just a, he's here, open up, hey, let him run it, hit it in there as hard and quick as he can. If it were me, I would probably just make a general rule, have him open up strong side. You know, that way you have to have a rule one way or the other. Last year we ran it out of stop and we were balanced. And I just said right and left, I would tell him. But this way, I would just make a strong rule, strong side, just basically, and just let him get what he can. Just tell him keep pushing until he sees daylight. But again, you can run at 10 or 40, you can do either way. Okay. Uh, this one here is the one that, again, the quarterback, we're going to make it look like a sweep. And if the, the quarterback says they're not paying attention to me, we can run this. And the reason I'm going to call it read is with some of these older groups, I want them to actually read the defensive end and make it look like something. But for the younger groups, we don't want to do that. Okay. So he's going in motion. He's taking off. I think I'm going to sell it like a little before two so he can just take off through here. Tell him reverse turn and boot out here and keep it. Okay, the trick to this whole thing is we're, we're hoping this defensive end comes crashing in here because he's not been paying attention to him. We know that. So I'm going to tell my tight end to just release and go first guy outside. Okay? I'm going to tell him to, okay, if you got someone heads up on you, you just about got to cut him and take him. If you don't have someone heads up on you, go second level. Okay? The bad thing about this is if he cannot make his block, well, his defensive end is more alert than we think. He might make the play right here in the back of him. That he just he might. But I think I'm willing to give that up because this is something you'll run two, three times a game. It's not something you'll run 25 times. Okay? Um, but I think it's worth it. And again, if you want to make it look like the sweep. So we'll just call this 19. So under right 19. Okay. Now, to go along with what well, I was talking about a sweep, <coughs> the eight, I would teach it first as if the two back were getting the ball. But as you go, and the kids get more comfortable with it, you can call 18, you can call 48, how are we going to do it? But the blocking will stay the same. So he's just like a sweep for he's cracking back on him. He's going to help the tackle with him. We're pulling him, we're pulling him. If you want to go, 18, have him go in motion. Ball snapped. He reverses out. Two just becomes a lead blocker at that point. Four can carry the same fake he's been carrying on. Number one just keeps it goes. The five would have to reverse out though, so he makes sure he's behind number two. Just reverse turn and take off. I had a little bit of kid last year I did use that we put him at quarterback. He did not complete a pass all year. He would got off of throwing the ball. He thinks he's a pitcher, but he's not. Um, but we put him back there and we just ran quarterback sweep about three or four times a game because he's quick and he could do that. Um, but this would be a good play because then you've got that extra lead blocker in front of you. Um, if you wanted to do 48, let's say a kid back there is actually a stud and you can try to sweep him, just do the exact same action. Just get it, practice pitch a little bit. Just get it and do a reverse turn, just pitch it to him and run a 48. So he's actually getting it this time. He can toss it to him and then just boot out. But same principle. You know, like I said, but if you got a stud here, you want to get him the ball in the perimeter, just go 48. Okay? Um, the passes, we call it flood. Okay. 
But what we want to do is, we've got three, come on drag, we've got tight end, he's running a V pattern, so just have him take some steps in like he's running toward the safety and then break it out to the corner. And we had him run the post across the field. So if the safety goes with him, hopefully the safety leaves this area occupied here. Okay? Um, number four, he can just fake it like he's been faking it the whole time. What I found out when I ran this play, this guy's open lock. Because we're faking and all the action's going this way, all the defense is looking this side, and this guy's actually got into being open. Uh, and but I didn't know that until it actually just happened. I was like, holy shit. It works a lot after that, once you realize that. Um, but that's something, you know, we just call it flood, and it works, and it's, like I said, pretty simple. Everything looks the same. Um, drop back passing-wise, what I was going to put up there, if you really want to just, like, let's say his kid's an actual stud, and say, I want to throw it to him three, four times a game, just say, hey, Tyler, whatever his name is, we're going to throw it to you on a slant. And have the kid run a slant, or an out, or a fly, whatever it is. Just give the quarterback one option. Just say, we're going to throw it to him on an out, or whatever it is, you know. But if you, if you really want to, go ahead and do it. I don't care how you do it. But that's something you can play around with in practice. And if you want, like I said, if you want to say, <clears throat> whatever, we're going to run you on an out. Okay, one, two, two, and just throw it to him. It's fine. But I'm not sure if you have a kid that can actually do that, you know, if you have a kid that's a stud or not. But anyway, third and fourth grade, that's it. Oh, I didn't, I didn't go for power. If you want to put power in, you should run power. I like power. It's just a lot of money at the point of town. But you don't have to. I would make sure you get everything else in first. And if you want to try power and it's late in the season, sometimes you want to teach something new just to break up some monotony. It's okay. I like power. Like you can run this power with the quarterback or the two back if you ever want. You want to send him after safety. He's going to go in motion. If you are running the 26, I'm going to go to the 24. He can reverse turn, hit it, and hits a little closer. And you're, we're just having everyone come down. I'm going to send him back to the cornerback. He needs to kick out his defensive end. We pull our backs. Did he cross ball?